What's going on everybody, King of Dragons 5000 here coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the Bandai SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Super, Super Saiyan Kefla. And so here we have the Super Saiyan Kefla pose and out of the packaging. Before we take a look at the figure, let's actually run through her accessories. Kefla does come with three different facial expressions. We do get the smirking expression. We do get a teeth grinning expression. And then we do get a screaming expression. She also does come with several sets of hands. We do get a pair of fists, a pair of open palmed hands, a pair of grasping hands, a pointer finger right hand, a taunting left hand, and then a hand that is used to hold her energy effect, which does look really nice. It is a red energy effect. I do like that. She also does come with a set of cross arms, which look really nice. And then her final accessory is a set of hands that have her gigantic burst power effect, which looks really nice. I do like that. Other than that, Kefla doesn't come with any other accessories, so let's actually move on to her details. And so here we have a closer look at Super Saiyan Kefla, and I'm not going to lie to you guys, this is a really nice figure, although mine does have an issue that I do need to talk about, and it does deal with her interchangeable arms. Um, on mine, the right arm comes off very easy. Now, there's really no easy fix for that, and I actually know what the problem is. When you put on her arm, there's supposed to be two pops. There's supposed to be a single pop for the bottom peg, and then this part that pegs in at the top. Mine, unfortunately, she doesn't have the inner workings to have that actually pop properly, so it makes moving this arm very easy, and you can see, just by moving the arm around, it pops off and that is very unfortunate that mine does have that issue. I don't know if it's a universal issue, but that is something to note on mine. Yours might not have that issue, but mine does unfortunately. So let's have, actually have a look at the figure itself. Really do like the design of this figure and I think Bandai has done a really good job capturing the look of Kefla from the anime and it looks very nice. I like the really big eyes that she has and then they have that really nice Super Saiyan blue which is perfect and looks very nice in a contrast to her skin tone and the hair that they went with. So on Kefla you can see she is wearing the Patara earrings which did fuse Kalifla and Kale which I think that was an interesting take in the Tournament of Power and this is the end result. Now unfortunately we don't have a powered down head for her so we only have the Super Saiyan hair which I'm perfectly okay with. I think the Super Saiyan hair looks so much better plus if they were to have given her a uh, uh, base form head it will look a little bit strange seeing as how she is in her super saiyan state where she was a little bit more muscular more toned so this actually works for me now yeah as you can see she does have a tough time standing up straight and that's just because of how much hair she actually has i mean just look at how crazy this hair is the vast majority of her head is nothing but hair and it's very crazy. Interesting thing, you can actually see the little hair tie that we saw, see with Kale that transitions into Kefla. So that's a really nice little detail that I didn't even notice. But yeah, uh, she is a little bit back heavy because of her hair and there was really no way to do that unless you flattened her hair. which. I don't think that's the way to go. She has a lot of pointy bits in her hair, so do be careful how you grab her head. So yeah, there is that. So moving on to her costume, she does carry over most of Kefla's uh, gear. We do have the kind of pinkish shirt that she has on her, and then we have the braces here. Not much of Kale in terms of costume, which is kind of strange. I think that's the way it was with the Goku and Vegeta. It was more dominated by Goku's appearance, and you know what? I'm perfectly okay with this. So, one thing to note is that she has a very toned abdomen here. We really don't see this too much on Dragon Ball figures, but yeah, her abs are very toned and I do like that. She also does have kind of toned arms, although I think the arms could have been a little bit bigger. She's still a little bit on the slim side because she is a female character, but yeah, I would like to see a little more tone on her arms, a little bit 
more size you can see her braces are done in this really nice gold color and right now I do have her with the fists on so really do like that now one thing I will point out is why did Bandai do this they actually made her uh, definition especially in her hind corners very defined I don't remember her glutes being this defined but they actually made her very thick so thick that she's thicker than most oatmeals don't know why they did it but they did and that's just something I do have to point out but yeah her spandex doesn't really offer much definition so that's one thing I don't understand if she doesn't have definition in her legs why did they give her so much definition in her hindquarters that doesn't really make sense to me uh, and then this is another part of contention for me is the way they design her knees well we'll get into that when we have a look at her articulation but her boots do look really nice we do have the gold here at the toes and then the gray shoes looking really nice with some more cuffs right here done in gold but yeah overall I do like the figure there's some questionable, bit, questionable bits of detail here that I wonder why they even included it but overall I really do like the way Kefla came out they did a very solid job with her so with that out of the way guys let's actually have a comparison between Kefla and other figures you may have in your collection here we have Super Saiyan Kefla posed next to a Marvel Legends Cyclops and a DC Multiverse Superman. Here we have Super Saiyan Kefla posed next to a WWE Elite Scale figure and a Mezco 112 Collective Popeye the Sailor Man. Here we have Super Saiyan Kefla posed next to a Lightning Collection White Ranger and a Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian. And finally here we do have Super Saiyan Kefla posed next to Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Ultra Instinct Sign Goku. So with the comparisons out of the way guys, let's actually move on to Kefla's articulation now. She does have some interesting points of articulation which we'll get into that. She kind of has like a figma joint here in her head in which she doesn't have a ball joint but she can rotate left and right as you can see we have really nice head tilt because it's actually a pin going into her head not your standard ball joint so we do get some really nice head tilt out of that. Her head does rotate left and right, no problem. And it is still on that hinge, so we do get some upwards movement. And then we get some very good downwards movement. So I do like the range of movement in her head. Despite the fact she doesn't have any movement here in the neck, we get some really good posability with Kefla, so I do like that. And because it's not on a traditional ball joint, you can see it doesn't go all the way around as you would expect it to. We can kind of simulate it, but it's not a ball joint, so do keep that in mind when posing this figure. We do have, I'm getting this, it's a hinge here in her butterfly joint, which you can see it does pivot forward and back, but it kind of wants to go downwards more than anything. It might be a ball joint, but yeah, it could be a ball joint, but it does go forward. Doesn't go back all the way, unfortunately. Arms do go out to the side to about right there. Now, her arms would do a full 360, but you gotta be careful for her hair. And as you can see, it does want to pop the joint off the arm. And that's just because her shoulders are very, very tight. And I'm actually worried that I might break this figure if I try forcing the shoulders to go. And uh, that's just very unfortunate, to be honest. I might have to hit her shoulders with some lubrication. Uh, we do have... Uh, shoulder rotation which does take place in lieu of a bicep we do have a single bend in the elbow giving us about 90 degrees and we do have your standard ball hinge here at the wrist so I really do like that she has a ball joint here in the torso which does allow for some really nice movement side to side forward back no problem I mean just look at that back arch it's really impressive and then forward really good as well then we have another ball joint here at her waist which you can see she can go full matrix right there then going forward we get some really good range as well to the side other side now unfortunately she doesn't rotate all too well and that's just because of the way her body is designed it's more of an oval than a circle so as you move it it does want to butt up against itself and that is a little bit unfortunate they could have designed that just a little bit better her hips are very limited because of this floating crotch piece you can see that they go forward only to about right there they can go out 
to the side even further but unfortunately because of how it's designed that's as far forward as they go it doesn't go any further up and if you try moving it it does rotate out so do keep that in mind we do have thigh swivel right here legs go out only to about right there could be better then we go on to her knees which I really don't like so we do have a double joint here in the knee and just using one joint you can see she gets very good range now Bandai went the extra mile of giving her double jointed knees so we do have a joint here at the top of the knee and a joint here at the bottom of the knee and like I said that bottom joint gives us a surprising amount of range but that top joint can move as well and how long has Bandai been making figures? This is very unacceptable. I mean, it does give her much better range, but just look at how terrible that knee is. Um, you're better off just using the bottom joint right here and going a little past 90 because using this joint, it uh, that's terrible. I don't know. I normally don't talk about anatomy, but yeah. What is that? And then the arm just fell off again, unfortunately. Yeah, that's a problem with mine. But what is that? that that's so crazy that Bandai actually did that and now it's kind of stuck. Okay, yeah, it does rotate right here. So you do got to keep that in mind when moving it. But yeah, really strange why they would do that. We have the updated ankle. So it's a ball joint here. So it does go forward and well, a ball hinge, it goes forward and back. Then we can rotate that to give her a true rocker ankle. Forward facing pin for rocker ankle. And then of course we do have a toe hinge. So overall, some questionable, bill, questionable bits of articulation, but overall Kefla here has some pretty good articulation and I do like it so. With that out of the way guys, let's actually get her pose for my final thoughts and then we'll wrap up this review. And so here we have Kefla pose for my final thoughts and overall Bandai has done a really impressive job with this figure now. I do have to note that mine does suffer from some quality control issues especially with the right arm popping off really easy. It's not a big deal once you get her pose it stays on and you don't have to worry about it falling off. It's not like it just falls off without reason as long as you're not messing with it it doesn't come off now. Like I said I'm not sure if that's a universal issue or if it's just mine. If yours has that issue let me know down in the comments but so far from what I've seen it's probably just mine and it's just poor quality control overall I do like the way Kefla came out I think she comes with just enough accessories although if I'm being quite honest her gigantic burst effect does kind of seem a little bit fragile if you were to flick it it would make a really fragile sounding noise um, you know what I mean the sound of fragile is really obvious when it comes to figures I think they should have made it just a little bit thicker but I understand why they made it that thin so that uh, this figure can support it without a stand overall guys this is a really nice figure and if you're a fan of Dragon Ball Super and you're a fan of Kefla which I know a lot of people are you're gonna want to have this figure in your collection now at the time I'm making this video she is no longer available on premium Bandai which is where I picked up mine for about $62 if you are gonna get her from a third-party website like Big Bad Toy Store or Entertainment Earth she will run you about $90 which is a really big markup but I do understand why the big box stores have to do that they have to make a profit when they sell these figures but I don't see a $90 figure here $60 I think is a perfectly good price for Kefla now if you weren't able to pick her up from the Bandai website you will have to go to secondhand market for her where like I said you are looking to pay at least $90 I would say try to find a sale because this isn't a $90 figure it's a really nice figure but I don't see $90 here in Kefla and she is still a really good figure to have just not a figure that I would spend $90 on so if you're a fan of Kefla you probably already pre-ordered this or if you're like me you're probably a completionist and pick this figure up to go with your Dragon Ball Super collection with that being said guys I'm King of Dragons 5000. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, go ahead and check out all my other action figure reviews, as well as all my other Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z related videos. Hopefully you find them informative. As always, if there's a figure you would like to see me review, let me know down in the comments and if it's in my collection, I'll gladly have a look at it. While you're at it, check out my Instagram account for new and exciting action figure photos. And as always, ring that bell to be notified every time I upload a video. 
Until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Take care, everyone.